quiet. That was good. So we're here with Javier Osorio Mejia. Where are we at? We're at Vault 134 on Orchard Street, on the east side. So for people that don't know you, who are you? What do you do? Why are you considered the plug in NYC for everything hard to get? Um, so my name is Javier, also known as Upscale Crack mm -hmm. on Instagram. Um, pretty much what I do, I try to get any limited or like exclusive item that comes out as far as like footwear or streetwear or pretty much like time pieces, anything like that. So yeah. anything that's like hard to get, I try to get my hands on. You told me your backstory a little bit, but yeah. you weren't always in the sneaker game. So you went to school. I, yeah, I did go to school. I went to school for computer science. Okay. Um, I graduated. Well, I was at Fairleigh Dickinson, then I ended up transferring to William Patterson. Yeah. I graduated for um, with a bachelor's degree in computer science, master's in information technology. Um, but I was already like in the street, uh, pretty much just like doing all the streetwear stuff. So where did that love for shoes start? Like uh, it started. It started super young. It just pretty much started as just something like me just trying to like be fly when I was just coming up. I would just see other kids, you know, just getting all the latest Jordans or whatever type of clothes it was at that time. And then I had older cousins yeah. that were already camping out for shoes. Um, so how old were you like at the time? Uh, I think I started like camping out for shoes at like 13, 14 years old, okay. probably like 14 years old. You're a baby. I'm, I was young. I'm 30 now. So yeah, yeah that's... 15 years ago, so. And you know, it was just pretty much just watching my cousins. Like, whatever my cousin would wear, I would want to get. Yeah. And you know, my mom couldn't really afford it all the time, but mm -hmm. as I got older, it was like, whatever type of money I could get for school lunch or something like that, I would save it. Or whatever I had to do as I started growing up. Yeah, so, yeah. That's really, that's really how I started stacking up the paper to buy my even my own shoes. Okay, so at that time, you were just getting fired to get fired, right? So you were just... I just, I just wanted to be... Except that at school, you know, like my thing was always getting fly and I was always around kids. I played baseball. I played football, you know, like we athletic, we, we on some sports stuff and, you know, You're trying to do like the school NBA tunnel, like just pull up to games. To uh, fly. I just, I just wanted to be fly. That's really what it was. Okay. So then from there, all right, you're already a fly guy. You went to school and how did this become a business? Like when did you start buying shoes to sell? Well, well for me, like I said, like when I was in high school and I was already camping out, I was camping out for myself at first. And I was in Jersey at that time. I'm camping out or I, I used to come sometimes to New York for like midnight releases. This is when like there used to be like midnight releases on 34th Street or uh, in Brooklyn and stuff like that. And I used to watch my older cousin Hood pack slime. Mm -hmm. And I saw that he was making money and my cousin Jimmy. I remember I looked at one of their PayPal accounts and it was like 70,000. They, they used to sell shoes to a store in Cali. I'm not gonna say the name. Um, and I'm like, damn, you make this much off sneakers? Yeah. Then it just clicked to me like, I gotta start doing the same. I started camping out for shoes in Jersey. I used to bring my brother, my mom, my dad, <laughs> my cousins. Anybody that, I, anybody that I knew could come and get some money with me, I just used to, I used to bring them all out with me. Yeah. And then it just became like something repetitive. But this is throughout high school. This is me just growing up. And I'm, I already got a couple thousand saved up. Then I ended up going up to college. Yeah. Once I got to college, I ended up going to Fairleigh Dickinson there was another sneaker store down a block from my school called Packer Shoes. Um, I ended up getting friends at Packers. It started off like, yo, me making, me making friends there, buying stuff for myself. Mm -hmm. Now I got people from the college coming to camp out for me. Okay. So now I'm paying people at the school to come camp out at the store to get me items and I'm selling them on eBay. This is before like StockX and GOAT. This is like 2012, 2013. Yeah. There's no stock X, there's no GOAT, and now I'm seeing revenue. But I wasn't really flashy. My thing was just like, I just like to wear fly shoes, and I'm selling stuff online, and nobody knows who I am. Okay, so at the time, obviously, I know you're not going to discuss like full figures, but when you were starting out, like how much money were you seeing where you were like, you know what, this is a legitimate business? The sneaker game was in a different era at that time, so like... Uh, out of a release, if I got like 10 shoes, retailing at like 160, depending on what it was, I would probably double or triple my investment. Okay. 
I would probably double or triple my investment. But as a college student, that was amazing for me. Yeah. And even comparing it to somebody that has a nine to five job, it's like, that's great. Then I actually started working at a phone store. Okay. So to that was me, super random. That was super. Yeah, I started working at a phone store. To me, yeah. I'm like, I could sell sneakers. Phones cost a little more. Yeah. So to me, it was like I'm a good salesman. I started thinking about it like that. Like I'm a good salesman. I ended up working at a phone store uh, in Garden State Plaza, like right by my college. Yeah. And I ended up being like number one in like the country. Wow. Se- yeah, for selling Damn. phones, I was like number one in the country. But okay. then I was like, after a while, I'm like, I can't do this no more. I, I didn't like the fact that I had to answer to somebody. Yeah. You know? So then it was like, I'm just going to do f- shoes full time. So what are your tips for just anybody that's interested in sales and getting better at their business? Like, what so, makes you a good salesman? So, what so, so what I would say about being a good salesman, number one is know your product. Yeah. Like, really know the product. Know the history of the product. Know, you have to know who to sell to. That's another thing. Like, as far as sneakers... If somebody walks in that door, like me looking at them, I already know what type of shoe they probably want or what size they wear. Like, I could look at your feet and, and, and probably know what size you wear. You get what I'm saying? So it's just pretty, no, it's, it's pretty much knowing your audience and just knowing the product and knowing how to push it. Yeah. That, like, that's really it. And, and it's crazy because in the same mall I worked at, that's where I would go get sneakers at. So the yeah. grind never stopped. Nah, not for me. Not for me. And especially coming up, the way I came up, like my parents was poor, they ain't had no money. Mm-hmm. They but but they did do everything they had to do to get me to do what I had to do. You got what I'm saying? So yeah. to me it was more like I'm gonna try to work my way through school. Like yeah, my yeah. parents is immigrants. They ain't know how to do no FAFSA. They mm-hmm. ain't know how to do like any of that school stuff. I did everything myself. Immigrant immigrant kids are always like reading legal papers and <laughs> like my mom no my mom knew nothing. All my mom knew was the social security, she had to give me the social. Yeah. I'll sign for her. She wouldn't even sign herself. Mm-hmm. I was just Same. asking for the social. Give me the social. I know your birthday already. I know like your name. Like little lawyers, like at young ages. And but. and that's really what it was. Yeah. But I really went to college to play baseball. Oh really? Yeah, okay. I really. That, so you were that, nice. You were pretty good. I was pretty good. I went to a D1 college. So okay. I, I went. I went there for baseball. Yeah. So I went to Fairleigh Dickinson for baseball, um, and I ended up getting hurt. Like. That fall, when I came in, I tore my rotator cuff, okay. um, and I ended up just not playing. So then from there, because I know you've told me your story before, right? Mm-hmm. So at some point, you started working at Amazon. I worked at Amazon after I graduated, yeah. Okay. So after I graduated and I got my degree and all that, I ended up, uh, one of my fraternity brothers I ended up getting a job. He ended up getting me a job at Amazon. So I was actually, uh, um, I was managing a whole warehouse. So I was dealing with like 600 people a day. Yeah, it was right crazy. Right out of graduation? Right out of graduation. They Ooh. threw me right into the fire. Um, I'm not going to disclose how much stocks they gave me and all that. Yeah. But it was a... This is this is like 2015. So the Amazon shares were really low. Yeah. I think I got like 200 shares at that time. That's crazy. Damn. All right. So yeah. That. And then- plus your salary. Plus your salary. But my thing was like, I felt like I was slaving. Mm. The sneaker stuff was picking up so much, and I was making so much money. I'm like, I have to leave here. Yeah. I have to leave here, and it was just like my body was just breaking down. I would look, so I I worked. I used to work the midnight shift on purpose. I would work from 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. every day. Sometimes get out at 6 a.m. Yeah. And then I would drive. I, I was working in Carteret, New Jersey, at an Amazon facility. I would drive to Soho to meet up with my boys. To, to get sneakers, not sleep all day. I would try to sleep in the car a little bit. I would have my boy RV drive my car. I would yeah. sleep and then be back in Jersey by five o'clock. Back to work. Every day though. This is every day. Really? This was every day I was doing that. Every single day. That's crazy. So no sleep for you? No, I was not sleeping. And I was just drinking monsters over and over and over. That's when I'm like, yo, I got to stop because now I'm getting a healthy. Yeah. But I'm caking. I'm making money. I'm 22, 23. I'm making a lot of money at this time. Yeah, yeah. But it was just, it was crazy. But it's part of the grind. So so for that, because a lot of people, when they want to start a business, they'll leave their job without even knowing like if their business is going to do good and just jump into it. So would you say like 
do you recommend that or are you against that because you still grind it until you were like i could really make money by so like, for me for me it was like i was at a place where i was comfortable right i was on a salary mm -hmm. so i knew you coming out of college and you going into an amazing company like amazon because it's one of the top companies in the world yeah and you're making six figures coming out of college yeah. And you have a bunch of stock bonuses and stuff like that. My people used to, like, my higher-ups at work, they used to think I was crazy when I would explain to them, like, yo, I can make more money outside. Like, we would argue about certain things, and I'd be like, bro, I don't have to take this from you. Like, I, could, I make more money than you already. Yeah. I used to explain that to them. I make more money than you already. So, to me, it's like, to me, it's like, if you know, if you know you really want to go full throttle for your business, or... You really want to just be an entrepreneur? Take the risk. Because I feel like I took the risk too late. Like, even though I, it was a good time in my life when I took the risk to leave my job. Yeah. If you think you could take that risk right away, take the risk. Because, bro, you have a, you have a better life. Your thinking process is better. You're not tired. You literally do what you want. You're, own, you're your own boss. Mm. And it took a while for me. I stayed at that company for three years. I literally grinded out for three years. No sleep, Ooh. nothing. It was a long time I was there. And I was still came in out every day. Nobody knew I even had a job. That's crazy. Nobody knew I had a job. Yeah, so you were out here regardless, like starting your Nobody business. Nobody knew I had a job. I was working from 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. every day, going to get sneakers the same day. That's crazy. Losing weight, looking skinny, like... Damn. But, I, but, but it was that dedication to me. It was like... I know I'm going to do my thing. I know I'm going to push. What makes you special, right? Like we mentioned before, yeah. is you get the pieces that nobody else gets. Yeah. How do you do it? Um, I know you're not going to disclose. Like, like I can't things, say like what stores I get it from yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Like in New York City, the, the sneaker community is like a mafia. Well, it used to be because it's different now. It yeah. was like a mafia. Like there was a big sneaker coming out. We were all there. Whatever, 50 people to 100 people, we were there. We'd make sure we get the items first. Because we knew they were, they would resell for a certain amount of money. Yeah. Um, and then it just became to a point where we're like, yo, we need to get every crazy sneaker that comes out. Okay. So we would travel everywhere. If, it doesn't matter if it's Texas, Miami. We'll go to Boston. We used to drive to North Carolina. We used to drive to D.C., um, New Orleans. Like, I have been everywhere in the United States for sneakers. So they used to call us the Golden State Warriors. Like, okay. me and my team. Damn. That's what they used to call us in the street, though, in the street. Yeah, yeah. Um, putting, up, putting up numbers? Listen, we used to put up <laughs> numbers. And, like, the type of numbers that we put up, it's like, like, people really ask you, like, how do you do it? Yeah. And there's really no explanation to it. Like, you walk out of an event with 70 to 100 pairs, and there's only five of you guys. That's people crazy. are really looking at you like, yeah. what are you guys doing? Damn. And I know, obviously, there's people at home, people out there that get mad because they don't get their hands. But Listen, gotta there's going to be, bro, there's people all the time in the, in the blogs that hate resellers. They talk stuff about resellers that we ruin the game. But no, we actually help, we help the game. Yeah. Because without us, there wouldn't be a StockX. There wouldn't be a GOAT. Like, anybody can become a reseller right now. Yeah. Anybody, any average Joe from the street can buy a pair of shoes and sell it and make some money. That's true. Before, it wasn't like that. It wasn't like that. There was no platform for you to sell. You had to really be part of the culture to sell anything. And do you think those platforms were good for the game? No, they destroyed the game. Okay, explain that. As far as for me, they destroyed the game because it's like they created their own, I feel like they created their own market for a sneaker. Mm -hmm. Like there's some type of sneakers that I know that'll come out now in 2023 that if they came out, in 2017 or 2018, would go for 5000 3000 whatever it is, that go for $300 now. That's crazy. But that's because the market is so manipulated now. You have kids that can sell on those platforms. You have people that have never collected shoes before, like that don't know what's going on. You have bots. You have all type of different things that yeah. it's just not the same. So there's people that are watching this that they know you, they know your come up story. Yeah. There's people that know about the sneaker game. Yeah. Some people that don't know anything about shoes, right? Of course. But they're just interested in the business part of this. Yeah. So for people that are listening or like, what? You make crazy amounts of money selling sneakers, right? Yeah. For some people, that's a crazy concept. Okay. For a lot of people, you can't say the exact number, but like a ballpark. Like how well do you do 
selling sneakers like um you can describe it however you want yeah. i've made millions selling sneakers okay millions that's a big number i've right. made millions selling sneakers okay i've done that so what sure. are you, so and not just anyone does that right like you're you're making those numbers but that's because you put a hustle behind it so of course what do you aside from being able to get those sneakers like from a business perspective what sets you apart from other people I think what sets myself apart from other people is the stuff that I get, how fast I get it. Okay. Uh, I get a lot of stuff before people. I get a lot of stuff before the blogs even get them. Mm. Like they'll take my pictures and post it on the blogs. That's crazy. And it's happened multiple times. Yeah. There's stuff that I'll get directly from Nike that I'll post up and they'll flag my page or whatever just because like how does this guy get it? Obviously, I'm never going to say how I get it, Yeah, yeah, yeah. but we get everything first. Like, mm -hmm. we get everything first, yeah. and it's been like that for a very long time, and one thing about us is that we're consistent. We've been doing this, since, we've been doing this for so long, and we've been putting out pressure for so long, it's like, you can't say anything to these guys anymore important for people to know you don't have like a huge machine behind you like no we don't have it this, like, i've this never paid like for marketing okay i've never I've, i don't ask anybody to shout me out we don't ask for any of that this is us from the street from the street to this yeah. this is literally us from the street to this five or six guys that came from nothing we just put our brains together Obviously, all of us aren't, everybody's not the owners, but still, yeah, yeah. I'm doing this with my family. You get what I'm saying? 100%. Like, these are still my friends at the end of the day, whoever I'm working with. So, from a business perspective, right, you guys built this up, ground up. Yeah. Um, how did you figure out the business part of it? The, the component of, like, hiring employees, having a budget, just making sure you guys don't go broke. So, to me, like, when we, I was initially, I was initially supposed to open up a store in 2019. Okay. With my friends. It didn't work out. Uh, then I decided to open up with one of my brothers, Paolo, mm -hmm. and one of my men's, pa um, Guala. We ended up doing it together, right? But before we opened up, we, we, we came with a business plan of how we're going to do if we're doing well and how's it going to go for if it's not going the right way. Okay. Right? So you can't put all your eggs in one basket, yeah. and you have to know that if you're gonna open up a business, you're not gonna profit until like a year, year and a half. Ooh, okay. And this is and this is for everything. Yeah. Another well, some businesses don't ever profit. Some businesses don't ever profit. Yep. But in this resale market and in this sneaker game, you have to know you're gonna burn inventory. You're gonna burn through it before you start profiting. Okay. You gotta remember. Now you have to pay you have to pay for a store and all your other expenses. So you're not making as much. This is a small margin. Here's where the, now you have to start adapting to new things. Like in my world, I never sold clothes. Mm. I used to not sell clothes at all. Yep. Now I have clothes in my store. Used sneakers, I used to never sell used sneakers. Okay. Now you have to adapt to new sneakers. So it's just a different type of margin. It just gives you some more, it gives you more money to play with. You just have to manage your money the best way possible and it's three of us here. So we speak on the daily. We talk about what we have to do. And we have somebody just for that. Yeah. Because we're buy, sell, trade. So I have a certain amount of money every single day to buy sneakers. Mm -hmm. I have a certain amount of money every day that comes through the register. And I have a certain amount of money every single day that just comes through the side of just like people bringing bulk or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like you just have to have somebody that's really on top of everything. Because you could get lost very fast. Okay. I know stores that you could run as much money through the system. The sales tax is included with it when you get paid. Okay. Right? Yeah. So you in the back of your mind, when that bill comes at the end of the month, you don't know what it is. Let's say it's a hundred thousand dollars. You you received a hundred thousand dollars, right? You made a hundred thousand mm dollars. -hmm. And the sales tax is thirty, you spent it on something else. Yeah. It's crazy. You yeah, know what I'm saying? You have to know like how to manage that. Talk to us about like the craziest drop you've ever been to. Like tell us some war stories of like some I've had I've had too many war stories. Or like the one that's like embedded in your mind as like the I craziest. think 
like we've been through some crazy wars, but like we done fought online, we've done all types of things. I think just the most memorable one, mm -hmm. the most memorable story was, all right, so we used to travel to Texas a lot. We would fly from New York to Texas all the time. Um, because we had a, like an inside person working for Travis Scott. Mm -hmm. um, and he was, supposed to, he was supposed to open up a pop-up shop. So we would always fly. We would always fly to, uh, to Texas for the pop-up shop, but it wasn't built yet. The store just, they kept delaying it, delaying it, delaying it. Yeah. So then one weekend we flew, we fly to Texas, um, and it was supposed to be the opening of the Travis Scott pop-up. Nothing happened. We get a phone call that something's happening in Orlando, and was it Orlando? Yeah, in Orlando for Trophy Room. That's Michael Jordan's son's store. Yeah. They're like, yo, something's happening tomorrow in Orlando. So I'm telling my boys, I'm like, yo, we flying back to New York or we driving to Orlando or wherever. It, I forgot where it was. At. I think it's Orlando. And I'm like, listen. I'm driving to Orlando from Texas. Mm -hmm. My boy RV was like, we driving. All of us, we got in a car, we drove from Texas all the way to Orlando for a pop-up shop. There was already 700 people online. Ooh, By the time we got there, it was like six in the morning mm -hmm. before they opened the pop-up shop and I still got in number four or five That's in crazy. the pop-up. Everybody's yelling, how are these guys number one again? Because literally, we go to every state, every pop-up, every big Nike pop-up, we go. We're first. Yeah. Not to toot our own horn. It doesn't matter. The people know. It's on YouTube. It's on the internet. We're first for everything. Okay. It doesn't matter what it is. We're first. That's crazy. Walk in there. It's like a blue Jordan 5. I still, I still got a pair here in the store. Um, I walk in first. I got a pair. Everybody's looking at me like I'm crazy. I run to the parking lot. I dropped the shoes off in the car. I changed my outfit. <laughs> I changed my outfit. Damn, okay. I get back in the store like number 15. Yeah. Now they really yelling. Now they really yelling at me. <laughs> you said you put on a mustache, like. <laughs> Not even a mustache. I'll change whatever I gotta do. That's crazy. Different shoes, different hoodie. I go back into the store, I got another pair. Damn, not even a wig, like. Nothing. <laughs> now the security's on to me. They're like, yo, listen, we know you. Yeah. You gotta relax. But I got other people working with me, so they don't know what's really going on. Yeah. Now I got 40 pairs in the car, me and my friends. There's only 40 crazy. at this time. There's only 40 at this time. Only 40? There's only crazy. 40. Between five people, there's only 40. Okay. Now it's the end of the day. They're not allowing me to shop at all. Okay. They're not allowing me to shop at all no more. I'm trying to get back in the store. They're like, no. I get a phone call like, yo, listen. Go back to the store at five, go back to the pop about five o'clock. By yourself, I got a surprise for you. I walk in. I'm like, yo, what's going on? Buy whatever you want. What? Damn. This is the trophy room pop up. Mm -hmm. We're like, yo, give us a give me give me a hundred pairs. Then my man's behind me is gonna buy a hundred pairs. I'm like, yo, give me a hundred pairs. Didn't think I was gonna say a hundred pairs. <laughs> They're like, hundred pairs. They're like, no, we can't do that. We could do like sixty. Whatever, give me the 60. Mm -hmm. Swipe my car for the 60. My boy comes around the store. He can't even fit the 60 in the car. My other man, <laughs> my man Squala, buys another like 40 or 50. Damn. Now we got like 200 pairs, whatever. We end up making it to like a parking lot over there in Orlando. And we took a picture with like all of us. You still have that picture? I still have it. And Everyone it went viral. It and it went viral. Okay. It hit. Every sneaker blog you could think of, uh, anybody that was a sneaker influencer and all that, all that BS, people that try to get the free shoes, they were hitting me up, contacting me, let me get this pair, let me get this, let me get, no. Damn. But that's how it was, that's for crazy. real. crazy. Wow. For real. And it went viral. It went super viral, super viral. Yeah. I mean, you guys and, got... And that's just a light story. That's a light story, because we really went through war for sneakers. Yeah. We went through war. I went to LA with my friends. Mm -hmm. I went to LA for the Jumpman pop-up. There was a Jumpman pop-up in LA on Broadway. Mm -hmm. Complex Con was the same weekend. Mm -hmm. New York, any, every city you could think of was there for that. They all went to Complex Con. I had a heads up at the Jumpman store that something was releasing there. Yeah. I stayed there with my friends. I got, think it was like 85 pairs of a sneaker called uh, Jordan. 
not for resale yellow Jordan, not for resale yellow Jordan ones. They cost like 170. Resell them for like 3,000. That's crazy. And wow. I still got 17 pairs here in the store. Okay. I still have 17 pairs, never touch and I'll never sell them. So what was the most expensive sneaker you ever got? Or like the sneaker that you have or had that goes for the most money? Uh, I've had a lot of crazy stuff. In here, mm -hmm. in my store, I have a Colette Jordan one. Um, it came out overseas in Europe. That shoe goes for about 25, 30K. That's crazy. That one goes for about 25, 30K. I have a scar. I have. Scar I've had a few scars. Pizza Air Force Ones. Pizza shop right up the block on Orchard Street. Uh, it's a friends and family sneaker. Between thirty and forty pairs made in the world. Wow. Um, it got auctioned. It got auctioned for one hundred and twenty thousand on Sotheby's. That's not what I sold it for. Okay. It got auctioned for one hundred twenty thousand on Sotheby's. The highest I've sold a pair was twenty-seven thousand. Damn. Um. I have the Tinker Air Max Oregon. Uh, I had the Tinker Air Max Oregon um, Air Max once. I got those be through an NFT. I was doing a lot of stuff on crypto. I bought a lot of those. I think I paid like three Ethereum at that time. Um, and I sold a couple of those through Stadium Goods for like 19000 the Louis Air Force ones. I've done, I've sold a lot of crazy stuff. Okay, so clearly we see why you have those big celebrity clients that come to you for the, to get right, right? Yeah. For the yeah. concerts, we've seen Rochi yeah, yeah, yeah. through, like. Yeah, 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 I got Rochi right. Uh, I'm Dominican, so I got a lot of people out there. Yeah. Um, so where are some of those celebrity clients? I've dealt, name with, a few, name with, I've dealt with a lot of people. Rochi, TV Guns, uh, PJ Tucker, A Boogie Shops here faithfully. Shout out to our brother A Boogie. He comes in here and spends the bag all the time. Yeah. French Montana, uh, Conceited, um, Quavo, Offset, mm. uh, my brother Takeoff. That was one of my friends, like really close friends. Um, Rich the Kid, the whole Rich Forever. Like those are really my friends before all of this. Before all of this, like Rich Forever, like they helped me out a lot. Yeah. Famous Dex, Jay Critch, Rich the Kid, Grams, um, like they really helped me get on that pedestal because I was getting stuff for them. Yeah, yeah. At one point, like Rich, Rich the Kid was flying to New York to deal with my brother Grams. My brother Grams would get him Supreme every week. Ooh. Then my brother Grams ended up, you know, doing, going into music business with him. And that was already my friend, and he wasn't doing his clothes stuff anymore. So I was the one getting it for them. Yeah. Um, and yo, it just blew up. And then my brothers from Hellstar, like I'm wearing A stuff right now. They got the streets going crazy. Yeah, like I've seen a, it everybody's everywhere. wearing A stuff. So shout out to Nolo, Shawnee, Juice. Like we, the the networking is just crazy, and it's all of shoes. The way we carry our store is just like it's a culture type of thing. It's a vibe. Like you walk in the store, you're gonna get welcomed the right way. We got good music all the time. Yeah. Just like we That's treat people with respect. Like it's just, we compliment you on your fits. It's just every, we just good vibes on this side. That's it. So how has this business and just like getting money at a young age affected you now on a personal side? Uh, so on a personal side, it does take a lot of time out of you. Um, you start seeing your family less. You start seeing your significant other less. Um, you know, and it's hard because if you don't have somebody that supports you or you don't have a real family structured and like that they know what you're doing, it's going to be hard. They're going to question you. And then you have those people that at, that beg. Mm. They have their hand out. They seeing that you're so successful now, but they, they don't remember what you went through. They yeah. just ask. They just have their hand out. They just ask. And like... When you're in a relationship and you're doing stuff like this, they start to question other things. You got what I'm saying? You're out all night. I used to be out all night selling sneakers, three in the morning. This is New York City. Somebody might call me at two in the morning. Hey, listen, I need a pair of white Air Forces right now because I'm going to the club at 2.30. Yeah. I'm leaving my house. New York, New York doesn't sleep. 
You gotta be outside. New York doesn't sleep. Yeah. Like I'm leaving. You want to pay Air Forces at two thirty in the morning? Good brother. I need one hundred eighty dollars. Mm. When you could get them at the store at a hundred. But I need one hundred eighty dollars tonight. That's a nighttime premium. Overnight and it is premium. what it is. Yeah. I'm getting up. Like now I got a daughter, so it's different. So, but I ha I have the store now. I have a daughter now. So it was a little different. Like I don't do the drop of stuff anymore. But before, I don't care what time you're calling me. You need what? You need this? This artist is in town. He wants me to go to the, to the studio with how many pairs? I'm going. Yeah. I don't care. And that's important. So what advice would you give to young people that are hustling, right? Because you, you've you calmed it down a little bit now. Yeah, but, I've calmed it down now a lot. But when you were starting your business, like you had to really oh, I was, be in it. Here's one thing I would tell everybody. Yeah. If you win it, you win it. And be in it all the way. Yeah. You have to be in it all the way. You have to. Because if you half-ass the stuff... You ain't going to make it to where you're going to want to make it. Facts. Like, you really got to go all the way. And you can't be scared. But also, just be careful. There's been a lot of weird stuff that's happened within the sneaker stuff or clothing or whatever you're selling when you're meeting up with people. Just make sure you're dealing with genuine people. If you're dealing with a customer, meet at a neutral location. Mm. You know, just like, this is, this is for people that are doing stuff outside. You get what I'm saying? Build a website. If you build a website, make sure you have good security on it. Yeah. Just, you know, just try to be cautious of what you're doing, but go hard, though. You have to go hard. You have to. That's great advice. So now let's get into it. This is Gold Conversations. All right. So I want to know your goals for everything. We're going to do a flash round of a few questions, and you're going to answer with the first thing that comes to your mind. Ah, shit. Don't get me nervous. All right, you ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So starting with, who's the biggest goal for you, dead or alive? The biggest goal? Mm-hmm. Could be in anything. First thing that comes to your mind, like don't think about it. Too. Michael Jordan, Jay Z, biggest okay. goats. Favorite sneakers. Jordan Ever. One fragments. Ooh, fragment okay. Jordan ones, yeah, hell yeah. Most overhyped sneakers. Most overhyped sneaker. That's tough. Uh, don't maybe, think about it. Ah, uh, maybe pandas. Pandas? Yeah. Okay. But you said it before too, they'll sell like crazy. They sell like crazy, but they should be overhyped. Yeah, they're yeah. everywhere. They sell all day, so yeah, I would yeah. say like overhyped, yeah. Don't look at the question. I, right? I ain't looking at it. I got you. <laughs> all right, so throwing it back to your baseball days, if okay. you were a professional baseball player right now, what would be your walk-in song? Ooh, something by Eladio Carrion. Ooh, okay. That's What's my favorite artist. What's your number one Eladio song right now? Pal this is not even in here. I'm just going to ask. Pal de tenis. Pal de tenis. Shout out Eladio. Oh, yeah. Shout out Eladio. That's Love that. Love that. Oh, yeah. That's, that's my favorite artist right now. He's one. He's up there for me, too. I'm trying to get him to come to shop. Coming soon. I'm Hopefully trying to. This. If he sees this, Eladio. Hey, Eladio. Cuando tú vas, tírate para la tienda. Ya tú sabes. Ball 134. Hell, yeah. Uh, best investment you ever made? Dogecoin. Yeah? Super low. Okay. I got that. I got Dogecoin. Uh, through a tip on a Discord app I was at, I think Dogecoin was probably not even at it, probably like at a cent, two cents. Yeah, I think I put like 60,000 in it. Damn. Okay. And then I remember the day Elon Musk, Elon Musk got on Saturday Night Live and I watched Doge shoot up. I thought it was going to hit a dollar. And then I saw how much I was making. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. I'm watching. I'm literally in the crib watching it, panicking. Damn. It didn't hit a dollar, and I just saw it go down. I just sold all of it. Oof. I'm not going to say how much I made. Okay. It was a lot, lot of money. A lot of money. That's yeah, it. That's it all I'm going to know. All right. Who would be the first person you would call in case of an emergency? What kind of emergency? Any emergency. First person. You only have one call. I don't care what the situation is. Who are you calling? Sad to say, my brother RV. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Why yeah. sad to say? What do you mean? Because we always, <laughs> him, and, him and I argue so much and it's so crazy, but I know anytime I call him, he's going to pick up my phone call. So it's like that though. Wherever it is yeah. that you go like head to yeah. head with no, him. A matter of fact, no, I'm lying. I'm lying. I'm lying. Okay. Paolo. Paolo oh. too. Both of them. All right. RV's going to answer the phone no matter what. Okay. Paolo's going to answer the phone no matter what too. But sometimes he just be sleeping, so. Damn, Man. okay. Yeah, so it's oh, both of them, both of them, back and forth. Back and forth? Yeah, okay. for sure. Who's the best dressed Latin artist? Um, I would say J Balvin. J Balvin? Yeah, Shout J Balvin out. got swag. Shout out Columbia. But J Balvin been doing this, though. 
Yeah, he has. He's been doing this. So, like, you got to understand, he's part of Jordan Brand. Uh, Are he you has a fan upscale. of the kicks he's made? Yeah, I'm a fan. He has upscale Vandal behind him. Okay. So, like, he has a good team. So, he's fly already. So, if you could only rock one pair of shoes for the rest of your life, what would they be? I would probably, wa- I would probably rock uh, Black Cement 3s or Bread Force. Okay. And that was it. That was it. That was a fashion. You did good. Thank you. All right. So. Now we got to do the finish. Not yet. Hold on. We're not done yet. Oh. <laughs> so what comes next for you? You already got the store. You're making money. You and your team are killing it. What's, what's next? Uh, we just want to have a good rest of the year. Okay. Um, we're working on some other things right now. Maybe, we, you know, some relocation stuff to Miami. Who knows? Miami? Maybe. Okay. Somewhere else, you know. Uh, Miami needs the resale game. Um, but, you know, just right now, just building a brand, um, trying to do some more events here, just trying to get the name out a little bit more. Like, people know us, but, you know, we're still new on the block. Just follow us on Instagram, vault underscore 134. Okay. Um, YouTube? YouTube, same thing, vault 134. And, you know, we just po- we just try to um, stay, tuned to the, stay tuned to the Instagram. We just post items all day, every day, every day, so... All right. Well, thank you for having us at your oh, store. Thank you. We'd love to see the success. I Keep appreciate killing it. it. Thank Let you so more. much. Thank you.